At Quarry Rua, the Maoris are preparing food, food for the feast, which will be part of the welcome to the Maori battalion. Today, in Pars all over New Zealand, similar preparations are being made for the return of men who've been absent too long from the Marae. To the wahine falls the task of cleaning kai moana, mussels, pipi, sea eggs, power. Poriroa is famous for its shellfish, and these delicacies will not be missing from the feast to be held in Wellington almost at the ship's side. As night falls, the fires are lit for the biggest hangi that has been built here for many years. There is much to be cooked, and it's cooked in traditional style. When the ovens are opened, the food will be taken to the wharf. With sacks on top to keep the steam in, the food can be left to cook on its own. But there'll be more than food at the ceremony here on Aotea Key. There'll be music and hawkers and speeches. Emotions are welling up as the Dominion monarch moves slowly to her berth at Pipitia Walk. For the Maori people, this is the ship they've been waiting for. Down the gangway come men of the Maori Battalion, 780 men of a battalion that was volunteered two days after war began. They fought through Greece and Crete, in Egypt, Libya and Tunisia, through Italy to Trieste. Their casualty rate was five in seven. In the words of their commander, they returned not as conquering heroes, but as the remnant of a brave battalion. Aotea Key is to be the marae for the ceremony in their honour, and out to meet them go Sergeant Dananaya Te Amaho, followed by two others to challenge them. They come in peace, so the challenge is not accepted, and they move on to the marae. For the Maoris, this is a time of weeping as well as of joy. Those who will not return are not forgotten. <laughs> Among the official guests is the acting Prime Minister, Mr. Nash, members of Parliament and former commanders of the battalion. Arrangements for this welcome were made by the Maori War Effort Organization, with the Maori people sharing the cost. <laughs>
Plays, hakas, and speeches are part of the ceremony which included the intimate ritual of Muru Tapu, the removal of a tapu placed upon the battalion before it left New Zealand. The men were committed to the care of Tu, the war god, whose protection is now no longer asked. <laughs> Following the ceremonies on the marae, the men go to the dining room for the feast. For most of the men, there are still journeys ahead of them before they reach their homes. This is the par at Kuku Ohau, a small par where the ceremonies had an added feature. In the burial ground is a new memorial to the memory of one man who did not return. Unveiling the memorial is Bill Seymour. It is in memory of his brother Jack, who died of wound received in Libya when his truck was hit by a shell. Again, there is feasting, and the hangi is opened. Inside the dining room, double-decker tables are needed to hold all the food. So it is in other pars. Each has its own ceremony. Here at Ngaru Wahia, the arrival of the train bringing home the men is marked by little activity, but their people are waiting for them on the marae. Among those who attended the welcome here and at other pars was the Minister of Defence, Mr Jones. of the Maori battalion are home. In the years to come, their deeds will be told again and again, so long as Maori blood endures.